What's up, everybody? Oh, sure. Welcome. I'm Crypto Gladiator. Today we have a special guest. Sweet. Um, as I fix this camera, things are going to adjust, so I'm going to have to fix the camera frame, so bear with us for a second as I fix um, But these guys will talk amongst themselves. I'll hear them. Yeah, welcome everyone to our fifth podcast. We'll be going over what happened this week in the meta, and it's a pretty exciting week since it is the closing season. Um, you know, I think the season ends. Uh, do you know how many hours exactly Slita ends in? I think it's like, I, I honestly like the time is whack because I feel like the in-game timer, like the season reward confirmed, is not the same time as the timer that says remaining time. You know? Yeah. Like it's think... really weird. It was the, it was like that last season too, right? You would think with a hundred hundreds of thousands of dollars on the line that they that that they, they, there would be like a time, right? Like it's it's kind of important to know, right? Right. So like I th I want to say there's it's like in six plus twenty four hours, like thirty hours, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to definitely figure that out. And uh, sleep just for um. How how's your how's your end of season grind going? It was going good, and then today happened. <laughs> yeah, I was actually tuning in your stream all day. Um, I, I'm currently in 99 on the ladder, and I'm so scared to play with the double bugs because I feel like everyone's just like countering us at the moment. Oh, uh, I mean, this week I feel I, I played like a few games per day, and then whenever like bad stuff happened i just started playing a lot i guess and then i i don't know uh I, i've never been this down bad before it is like the first time i feel i've been yeah. like this down bad actually it's not only you it's like elzul it's Rallo, it's jacob it's like literally all my friends are just having like the worst end of season grind it's it's actually pretty sad yeah i mean it happens but uh definitely with this team there's a lot of variance i guess so it's rough yeah, yeah, you have to uh, take draws pretty much to like really stay in a chance. It seems like with a uh, double bug, because I think a lot of the time it's just like th this comp doesn't allow you that much flexibility in terms of like you have a control, but like if you don't draw your front line a lot of the time, like it's really sad. Because yeah, <laughs> and one you and right, and, and you, so. you you get like no value off your front liner. So it's rough for sure. Yeah, especially if you open up with like Fishnack and like they don't attack, or and if you don't open up with it and they do attack, there's 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 a lot of variance. Right. How have your guys like grabbing in going? Uh, me personally, it's okay. I, I haven't played in like a, a day and a half. Um, like I oh, see good. like that's good. I've been seeing other people play, and I I've just seen so many double aquas out, and like they're they're literally making me so scared. Like I I. I one point I kind of want to change deck and use something else, but it's kind of like risky, right? Like to play something you're not comfortable with the last day. Like I've done that before in the past, and it doesn't usually end too well. Yeah, that's what I'm. Right. That's what I'm actually kind of doing right now is I'm picking up. Uh, I picked up a poison guy from Azul, the twin tail, twin tail furball, uh, tiny turtle horn guy, and that's been kind of like a little bit rough for me. So mm -hmm. running that as like end of season switch up from my team I was running, which was the double plant, which I was also right. still just learning double plant. It it's been a little rough, but my goal is I'm probably gonna like last push for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Come on, fix. And uh, yeah, um, yeah. There's a couple of topics that we want to talk about. There, there's a couple of new decks in the in the format that I've been seeing that, that I haven't really seen all season. Um, the notorious one being the Indes deck, the like basically the Indes bird with the Scarab, right. Nemo, Acro, Aqua, the Piranha, and then mm -hmm. like the the, the the meditate plan basically with the goda right uh, what do you think about that actually so i have really mixed feelings on that i feel like it's just playing a lot like bird beast plant in a way but your mid is a little bit tankier or actually a lot tankier than like a typical mech so i guess in that regard it's pretty cool but like i don't know i feel like it's <sighs> I, maybe I'm just biased. I'm probably just biased. I don't feel the deck is that strong, but like, I don't know. I think yeah. I'm in the opposite camp as you in that in that sense because I played against it quite a lot uh, because I was stuck at like 2.8k mm -hmm. and it was they didn't have the bird. They weren't running the bird, but they were running the aqua in the back. 
and it felt like it was one of those comps that is just like near impossible to beat. Anytime I saw it, it just it felt really, really rough to go through. So I think it's I actually think it's quite strong, especially with the acro mm -hmm. and um um scarab in the middle. I feel like it does put a lot of pressure and also being able to stop you from healing is really, really good. But I think it doesn't do well into bugs. Yeah, maybe that's why. But I mean, even today, I actually struggled against them. And I actually, up until today, I had a 100% win rate against that deck. Maybe that's why I didn't feel too strongly about it. But I mean, a lot of things happen. So Yeah. Yeah. I've never played with it or against it. But like just looking at it, it kind of seems like it's a little bit weak to back door since it is a front to back deck. Uh, also, well, I it's just that you're putting your carry in the mid, right? It has the the closeout potential, has decent shield, etc. So, I think that was the idea behind it. Yeah, it's like kind of like a consistent fair deck, but maybe it's like just good enough in the meta. Like, I, I actually don't know. It's really interesting though, because I, I know like a lot mm -hmm. of players are playing it, and Indus got to like rank one earlier today with it. Right, right. So I mean, like, there, like it definitely has merit. It's just that, like, I guess specifically against bugs, it's like not amazing, but like. I, I, you can't frame everything in the framework of bugs so yeah and i think it counters everything else pretty well um because your midliner is super aggressive with like the double like i said the double double um plant or double um like bug slash um beast so it's really good into like almost all the plant comps also into like scarab because you have a tanky midliner that you can speed up comparatively to the shrimp so it's i find it to be relatively decent all, all around mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. bugs are just kind of its hard matchup because it's like if you don't draw insanely well on your midliner, it's not good. And then also you're not doing as much damage as you would if you're like a pure aqua or or something along those lines. So that's where I think it struggles. But everywhere else, I think it does pretty well. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting, that uh, Scarab guy, he went from 0 0.7 this week to 0 0.25. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that guy is insane, though. <laughs> that guy's good. Yeah, I, I, was looking, really good. I was looking to buy one, actually. And then I asked Bam, "Is like, should I buy this now? And he's like, nah, it's going to get cheaper. It's like, these are way bred out. And then the next thing we know, the, the next day, it yeah. went from 0.11 to 0.16. And the next day after that, essentially, it, it, it just went to a price that it wasn't really affordable anymore. So, yeah. But why do you think that that, say that one, right? The scarab plant, or the scarab aqua went so high where compared to the sandal? So the sandal only the sandal only does uh okay against uh bugs really. You don't really need it anywhere else. The scarab essentially gives you a better matchup against the against the plants and then also like um it's range too. It, yeah, I mean that that's like gravel too, but I mean like overall I feel like you have enough shield between Arco and such that you can kind of get away with it. And also the scarab is kind of nice for a lot of frontliners are running like zigzag right now, so you just kind of get the healing re uh, reduction, and it's kind of nice. Yeah, it's crazy how like just one card difference, like being like ten shield less, and just having that effect. But like that's that's what's like uh, everyone loves the net deck, right? Like not many people are like innovators. oh yeah, yeah. So as soon as someone does really well with the deck, everyone just rushes out to buy that exact carbon mm -hmm. copy, which just mm -hmm. drives the price up crazy. Even if like if you play the the version with sandal, like it probably would affect your win rate a little bit, but it's not that big of a difference. Let's be honest. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go. I wanted to ask, like, well, since we're getting closer to of this season, I want to talk about like mindset. That's like I think that's kind of the one thing that drives you know, good players from like the mindset you have. stays. Most of these last days are going to be grinding. It's true for seven hours. I hardly see stream hours. Besides the last season where he was grinding the time. So it's like it's that, those long hours are draining. So how do y'all prepare yourself? Start off with sleep. Uh, I mean, I honestly don't feel it. It's just like, uh, like I, I just play. Because like if I, if I really want to do something, like, yeah. No, that's really just it. I mean, I haven't really felt the grind so far. It's just like maybe it I, I feel it more when I'm winning actually, more than losing. When I'm losing, like it's just like fast Q next, you know? And then like 
Yeah, so it's like I don't feel it at all if I'm like like the higher you go, the longer the queue. Mm-hmm. Longer it. Yeah, so like I, I yeah, again, like I haven't minded it so much until like Yeah, I haven't really minded it. Um and like now it's just like uh yeah, when you're losing I I guess it just it's just different, I guess. I don't know. What about yeah. you, Tristan? Uh yeah, me personally, like I'll just be dead honest. Um it's it's actually kind of nerve wracking. Like n during the season, it's fine. There's not much pressure. Uh, if you win or lose, you still have so much time in the season. But now we're at the end of the season where like every win, every loss matters so much, you know, pushing towards that like top 50, top 10. So uh, I got to 60 and then now I, I deranked all the way to 99. Uh, it's like, where, where am I happy with at the end of the season? Do I want to just make a top 100? Do I want to go for a top 10? Do I want to risk it and maybe get knocked out of the top 100? I don't even know. Like, I honestly don't even know, which is, kind of, and just like, I haven't even played in the last day. I guess it's a little bit of a rank anxiety. Like I, I don't want to play and then lose. I'm not sure what deck to play. I don't want to play a deck I'm not comfortable with. I don't want to play a deck that I get, I get countered with. So like, I'm all over the place in my head. Um, that all being said, uh, when I do play tomorrow, I'm going to try to just keep it emotionless. Just try to make sure to count cards, count energy, play well, not care about winning or losing. Uh, and we'll, we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Are you? Uh, yeah, so I would say it's the same thing for me. Um, I had this, I would say last season is kind of like was my first season really playing like super competitively. Uh, I played other card games and stuff, but I think it's a, this is the different, it's like a different style because it's online. So you're kind of grinding constantly to try and really make that finishing push. Um, I would say the best thing to do is just really get in the mindset of just playing well and, and not really thinking about what your opponents plays. Don't think about crits or or how uh, like critting. It just, it's just like playing co consistent and playing playing to the best of your abilities. Uh, if you lose one game, move on to the next one. Just keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. And, you know, you have to, you have to, as Twisted said as well, you have to kind of decide with yourself, where are you happy stopping? If you're not happy stopping at, like, top 100, then, yeah, you're just going to have to keep grinding. And you're going to have to get to a point where you feel comfortable and are happy stopping with. Um, I think that's another thing to really kind of set yourself up for. One thing that's great, though, if you're, if you're ahead of the game and you're already at, like, top 1 to top 10, if you just stop playing for a week and then you came back for these like last two days to, you know, try and catch up your points. And if you don't catch up your points and you just stop, you stop wherever you, you feel comfortable again. So I think that's like one thing that's always like a good mindset to have is either be ahead of the game and already be in the, the position that you want to be in or be now and just know that you're gonna have to grind through everyone that's tryharding as well, because no one's no one's playing easy. Everyone's picking out their, their new tech. Everyone's bringing out the crazy decks they can. And they're all going to be trying to take take whatever position they want. Um, so just stay consistent, don't get tilted, and just keep grinding. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to be tilted. That's my New Year's resolution. It's not off tilt. <laughs> it, it, it's too late, it's too late for me. It's too late for me. I'm permanently tilted. <laughs> The big topic in the Twitter. Yeah, Phil. Uh, how do I how do I feel about win trading and how do I think the team is handling it? Um, win trading. I mean, yeah, it, it sucks. Uh, people are gonna trend, and especially with this game being kind of the way it is. Um. It's going to happen, though. It's like something that you really can't stop. And I think it's kind of, it, it's yeah, it's really something you can't stop. And and just because someone was streaming, they kind of got more punished because they're in the limelight. But I do agree that if you are going to stream, you're trying to so, show an example and set an example for people. And to be win trading on stream is just not appropriate. And then and just win trading in general. I, I'm, I'm someone that's competitive. And even last season, when I'd have people that wanted to throw games for me, I'd tell them not to. And I, I just wanted to play a fair game. So personally, I think win trading is dumb and I wouldn't do it. Uh, I understand why people do it, but yeah. Uh, and, I, and I do agree with uh, their stance on win trading. It's something that I don't think they should allow. And I definitely think it's something that is um, okay to get their axes banned and to, to make it so they don't uh, gain or that they can't win, uh, get any um, season rewards and the season rewards. But uh, you twisted. 
Um, yeah. So obviously I'm against it. Uh, that being said, it was not in the TOS. So, That's so like, the point. <laughs> so, yeah, so, let me, added, yeah. so let me tell you a bit of what I'm thinking. When people play tournaments or when people play ladder together, there's no rule that you can't play with a friend. And people, like I know, I'm, like I'm in the tournament scene, people play with each other all the time. In other card games that I'm playing with, that is completely illegal. If you're caught playing with someone, you're instantly disqualified. But in Axie, that's allowed. For, for me, if you play with someone in a tournament, you sh that you should be DQ'd because it's supposed to be one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. in, in with win trading, it's not on the TOS. So why can you play with someone in a tournament but you can't do a win trading. Obviously, like win trading it should be bannable a defense. But on the flip side, it's not on the TOS. So I don't think he should be punished. I don't I think he should be like, okay, don't do that next time. We're gonna add into the TOS. That's our fault. We messed up. We're gonna change that now. And now if you do uh win trading, you're banned. But I don't I don't think he should be banned because it's not on the rules. So at that point, like what what do you decide what's legal and what's not legal if it's not on the rule book? So right, right. I, I, I'm super against it, but I don't think he should be punished because he didn't do anything wrong, according to Axie. Okay. Oh, and, and, and I think I have to totally change my opinion. Um, I didn't realize that it wasn't in the uh, rules not to win trade. I totally agree with what Twisted said. Like, Twisted kind of hit the nail on the coffin. If it's in the rules saying, no, you cannot win trade, then yes, I, I totally agree. But if they, I would have rather them do the same thing, but slap on the wrist, hey, like this, this is not cool. Don't do it again. We're adding it to the rules instead of banning his uh, his axes, you know, kind of publicly shaming this guy for something that like wasn't against the rules. So I personally do agree with Twisted that it kind of felt like, and also the public shaming thing. I'm just always against it, anyways. I don't like drama and kind of bringing a lot of drama into the space for no for no not not really a good reason is kind of like more, you know. I, I'm just not a fan. How do you feel about that uh, sleep? Yeah, I mean, so I mean, I, I've been like combing the twitters a little bit and like i feel like atello's stance on it has been very very mature on it so like big props to him about how he handled everything um essentially he he was just the bigger man and didn't didn't really complain about being banned but i mean obviously like this greatly affected him and i i feel really bad that like i feel really bad for him honestly um but like Overall, he's been such a good sport about it. Um, personally speaking, I feel that um, like it's just such a it's just such a hard matter to talk about because it's like per personally, like the the I feel like there's a lot of wrongs on 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 many different levels. So like I think that the like it was like too rough or like too harsh the judgment but at the same time like i don't like the attitude that was taken uh taken because of uh like the retaliation i guess so to speak mm -hmm. uh, like i'm not trying to call out taxon's character because like i i think he's like amazing player he's an amazing person i'm sure he's like completely fine but it's just like I didn't. I didn't like his how he reacted. I suppose maybe it's just a knee jerk kind of defense mechanism. Because like I know he's a great player. He doesn't need to go to these lens to do it. But at the same time, like yeah, I, I don't know. It's just it's just a mess, I guess. Um, I mean, my probably I, I I agree with like twisted in the kind of matter where it's like, I mean, actually affinity in a way it's kind of their fault that they didn't add it in there. If you look at every other single game that has some kind of competitiveness. Win trading is part of their us. I don't know how they let that slip for what nineteen seasons, you know. Right. <laughs> and then suddenly they want to be strict about it out of you know when somebody right caught it. So it's just like I don't know. I disagree with this kind of a slap in the hand. Here, don't do it again. We're gonna we're gonna fix the matter. Everybody, hey, this is us. This is our fault. We're fixing the matter. Blah, 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 kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a touchy uh, subject, I and and a lot of people are probably gonna be offended. And Fight, right, so. right right oh for sure for sure for sure it, yeah, it's yeah. Just, Go ahead, i was just gonna it. say it's, it's just like real life right like there's the law and there's there's against the law and if you do stuff that's not against the law like you're fine in life like people do shady shit all the time in, in in real life because they're allowed to and it's legal and i feel like it should be like that in axie also 
If something is illegal, write in the TOS, say you're not allowed to do it. But if it's not, then it's fair game. And he found the loophole. So kudos to him. But now that they found it, okay, ban it. Be like, hey, next time you do it, we'll ban you. But yeah, I just, I don't agree with the, the punishment. Yeah. Um, just to add on top of that, I think one thing that's really changed with Axie Infinity in the last two seasons compared to the seasons leading up to this, to just kind of touch on like Crypto Gladiator's point, um, they all of a sudden wanted to become more competitive. Like season 18 was like the change of the competitiveness for them, I feel like. So they started doing these, even in this season where they did the mid-season like ban or like bug fix of, you know, um, uh, the way, way Bone Seal interacted. So I feel like that's kind of what they're going for now is they're like, they want to make it more right, competitive. Yeah. And maybe the way that they handled it wasn't the best, but I think what their goal is, is to just kind of make it more competitive and make it more fair. And they're just kind of adding stuff in as things like arise. Like what, what Taxon, what, what, what Twisted said, Taxon didn't do, it was, wasn't wrong. It wasn't in the TOS, but now that it's in the TOS, now it's like a, a no-go, but I don't think Taxon or, uh, uh, Antello should have been like punished for this. Um, but I also have not really paid attention to Twitter drama or any of that stuff. So I don't really know all sides that were going on. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of talking from just experience. How do you think kind of moving forward um, in the space of like when it comes to like the arena, how they're going to, you think that they're consistently going to be making these mid-season changes um, when they kind of like, when they see something that's out of place, right? They, they feel like the Happy Bone Salt thing was the next point. You think like right. a, as they see these kind of changes, they're going to be implemented mid season, or do you think now that they're probably just going to hold off to after season? Because everybody had mixed mixed kind of emotions on it, right? People lost thousands of dollars on some on breeding farms, breeding these kind of things. Or do you think that that maybe the team just doesn't really care? They just want to fix it and kind of move on. Like what are your thoughts on the sleet? Since you were they were there with us in Miami, right? I really don't like the stance of changing things mid-season. Yeah, it's like a supposed like glitch or whatever, or like it, it wasn't like an intended factor. Like the season is not really long enough for people to innovate and figure out all the teams within one particular season. So like I feel that change, like I, I know, I know like sky mavis their goal is not to their their goal is not to like get people money or whatever like the monetary needs like all of that stuff like that's not their main focus i understand that but at the same time like like is that is that the right direction for the game like yeah they have the best thoughts in mind but like the timing couldn't be worse you know yeah. like yeah it, it was I, I felt the timing was awful actually um i i really really didn't like what they did with uh with the bumpy bone sale change mid-season um but yeah you think that uh they will do these things um uh, again let's say they say something else happens you think that they're more inclined to do it again or do you think from the reaction from the community that they'll probably I think from the reaction of the community, they'll probably wait. Yeah. So how everybody, how's how you feel about it, Twisted, as well? Uh, yeah, I, I do agree with it. Like, if something's broken because uh, of a glitch, go ahead, fix it, no problem. You know, the cards don't work properly. Yeah, that has to be fixed. But if something's like an interaction, it's like too powerful because of like how the cards interact with each other, that's not the person's fault for figuring that out. And they shouldn't be punished for, for figuring that out. They should be rewarded. Like, they should be able to use that deck until the end of the season. And then at the end of the season, you know, do your do your bans and stuff. Um, when it comes to like stuff like win trading and stuff, yeah, fix that right away, obviously. But if it comes to like something with like card changes, like Bumpy Bone Sale, that, that should be waited. Uh, in my opinion, you should wait until the end of the season and then fix it. Yep. Right. No, I, I definitely agree. I think it's it should be it should be something that always is changed um, after season and not during season because it really like for myself, um, I was a bumpy bone sale breeder. I was big into it. And it was also something that I was really strong. It made me like really strong in the ladder. I was climbing very well. And now I'm having kind of like a hard recovery because I had to sell off my farm. I wasn't really planning to selling off my farm. I was, you know, the, the way I was doing it is I was kind of selling as I was going. And I was also turning that profit into keeping my, my team alive and keeping me in the top 500 when I was climbing, not really trying to make a end of season push. And then it came to the point where now I haven't started been making any Ethereum. 
and I'm kind of on like the staggering end to where I didn't have enough to really like buy my team that I wanted to. Didn't really have time to theorycraft and prep as much as I wanted to because of this kind of change. So it kind of affected me a little bit bigger. So personally, I I do think that all changes should be made after season. Um, I can understand where their stance is coming from. Like they they thought this was more of like a bug, but it's something that's been around forever, and they they decided that they want to fix it as a bug. Um, maybe it's just like really discussing before they decided to do that type of stuff um i think it, it's always hard to make a decision no matter what you're doing but it's always probably best to just wait till after season to make the changes i i agree um how do y'all so as as this we have what two days left right is it like a day and a half or something yeah day and a half pretty much day and a half so going into this like mm-hmm. day and a half right how do what do you feel we'll start with blacked out that mm-hmm. you know any type of emerging teams that you feel are going to be strong with this day and a half of play. any emerging teams that i think yeah will be strong. Or just axes in general like anything that you feel like you think you've seen like yo you know double aquas are actually starting to come back or uh, a new type of comp that nobody's seen yet is starting to emerge and, and probably going to dominate in the last you know day and a half or so I would just say the Acro Aquas. Like, I, I felt like they were really good. They were sitting around, like, 2.8K. Like, I, that's where I've been playing for a really long time uh, on the ladder. So I've been kind of on the lower end. But I always felt like this was a really strong team and was really, really good. Uh, and we're now kind of seeing more of it being pushed up. I, I, I actually thought that team would have been top 100 and kind of be competitive in the top 100. But it was just interesting that it wasn't for the longest time. So I'm, I think that will be one team that we'll see a lot of is the... It, maybe just the mid laner. And maybe it goes with other teams as well. But I think the Acro... Um, Acro, Scarab, Nemo, like Par- or Prana, Aqua, I think we'll see a lot more of. Why are you blacked out? I mean, <laughs> why are you twisted? Yeah, I think uh, at this point in the season, it's a bit too late to see anything come, like anything new coming out. Uh, there is a couple of decks that we did see emerge this week, like the Double Plant Shrimp, which was like a kind of deck that didn't yeah. exist all season and just came out of nowhere. And uh, the Indes deck that we were talking about before, uh, with a day and a half left, it, it, there's not enough time to play test and uh, bring out like a new comp. Uh, you know, like anyone that's at the top rank has already grinded to the top, and now they're kind of just you know playing a couple games to solidify their spot. Uh, yeah. I don't think I don't think we'll see any new decks. Uh, but during the past week, we did see a lot of new decks. We saw the Indes deck, we saw the the double aquas, and then we saw the the shrimp with the the double plants. But uh, you sleep. Uh, I've been seeing, yeah, that, that double plant shrimp comp is definitely very interesting. Um, how's that strong? It, I, I think it's good because like, it makes it very hard for, uh, it, it's just very, very annoying. It's like really, really annoying. Cause like you have to, a lo- there's not that much damage left in the meta. So it's like, it's like, um, how do you describe it? Because there's not that much damage left in the meta, like people are, are like, um, it, it's hard to get through the double plants in a way that isn't gonna fuck fuck up your energy too much. So, yeah. what ends up happening is that you just have like these two plants. You're trying to get through them. They like brick wall you. It's like fuck. And then the other thing is that after after that whole nonsense like then you have to uh, deal with the shrimp which if they play like serious or they play like yam it depends on like what kind of style they want to play like after you deal with all the plants like they probably racked up a shit ton of energy and then you have to deal with like the fallout afterward it, it's just like a huge mess <laughs> but yeah <laughs> um and and i think a lot of them run the fur ball right now it's like it's like really solid i actually really like that comp Who's the person who created or uh, started? I don't know who created it, but I definitely see it around. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so as the season ends, and we kind of move on to the the off season, what are y'all like most looking forward to when it comes to off season? Uh, we'll start off with what you're looking forward to when off season. I'm looking to take a break from this game, dude. <laughs> take a break the season was way too long like uh, yeah, i agree with like the whole the whole like cheater thing and like 
yeah, that's something that would they would need to fix. But there's no reason to extend the season for like two weeks. Like so many people made, um, like plans. Yeah, it, it's. I, I think it was awful. Like I really, really didn't like uh, them extending the season for for uh, two weeks. Uh, maybe like a day or two is fine. And then, yeah, th there's just been a lot of controversial things that happened in season 19 when it comes to changes, whether it was the mid-season changes like the Bumpy Bone sale and then the season extension. I like that they do act on the fact, but it's just like, I think a lot of this, um, a lot of these like re rule and regulations, like a lot of this stuff has to be kind of thought out beforehand. Like I know like it might have not been an issue before, but like, um. I, I feel like definitely there has to be some kind of like future kind of like stance on how things are going to be handled because yeah. uh, it was very, very messy. Yeah. And personally, not not a fan of everything that's gone on so far. So. Yeah. Take a break. What about you, uh, blah, Twisted? Uh, yeah, just to, to go on what Sleet said, um, there's, there's a lot of players who are at the top. Um, more like uh, uh, to be a, in particular spam, um, spam and rice, you know, Sleet's teammate. Mm -hmm. he, he held, he held the number one rank for like a week when there was only supposed to be like a week left of the season. He looked like he was on pace to, take you know, to, to, to take it. And then two weeks extra of the season, you know what happened? A lot of yeah. eggs, a lot of other comps, a lot of time for people. Yeah. The copy just comp is what you're saying. <laughs> Not only like that, like people just learned how to play against it. Like his comp was kind of like, it, it kind of like was like a, now it's the meta game, but before it was kind of like new and it's like people didn't know how to do it. Like double, like backdoor with the mech. It's like people thought like, oh, mechs are broken. Everyone knew that twin tail and furball was going to be good, but no one thought about putting a toothless on it until spam did it. And then he, you know, he basically like held his rank for so long and he just got completely screwed over because Everyone was able to like figure out how to beat him, you know, figure out what comps are good against him. And then, and then he has to like wait another two weeks now to like try to make a top finish. Completely unfair. Like it's not, it's not cool at all. Like if they say the season's going to end on this day, it should just end on that day. Like maybe he would have like hit that comp for like another two weeks and brought it out two weeks later. But you know, like nope, season ends. Like he got, he got, he got completely screwed. Um, that being said, what am I looking forward to? Um, it starts with a letter and ends with a number, uh, V2. So I'm really, I'm really excited for, um, you know, the change they've been, they've been like, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They've been playing teasing. with us, teasing, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they've been teasing mm -hmm. us for so long with land gameplay and V2 it's coming soon, this and that, like, we need to see it. Like they, like, you know, it's stale. I don't want to see nerfs and buffs. I don't even care. Just do it even like another long off season, you know? Just like bring out V2, bring out Land Gamer. True, true. I'm super excited for that. And that's oh. the other thing. Going back to that a little bit, it's just like without actually knowing what's gonna happen, like how how are breeders and stuff gonna prep for that? Cause it's just like you like V2 is gonna be a completely different game, and then like like if there's gonna be a mid season change like what happened now, it's just gonna be I don't know, man. It's it's yeah. just Look, like, it's looking uh, a little a little scary, huh? <laughs> yeah. Especially for yeah. Uh, especially if you're a breeder, right? Especially if you're a big breeder, because mm -hmm. the cards are gonna be completely different, right? Everything's gonna be completely different. There's gonna be eyes and ear card uh, parts, new new effects, new stuff. Nobody coming to it in the beginning is gonna know what the meta is, unless maybe they played the two alpha, maybe. But I don't think anybody's gonna know what the meta is and People are not gonna breed it. What that's gonna kind of do? To, like what? We think about how that's gonna affect like the price, right? Let's move it. Right, right. Stuff like that when nobody's breeding because everybody's unsure of what. Well, I'm looking forward to V2, but at the same time, I agree. With you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little worried. <laughs> I'm a yeah. little worried too. I'm a little. Actually, I, I won't even say a little bit. I'm really worried, actually. I was hoping. I have a feeling. This is my feeling. I have a feeling that they're gonna. We're gonna have a very long off season, like this last one. You know why else would they, you know, extend their the um, we're gonna think for uh, the season for two. they need to do it for two weeks. You know, the kids are like, "Yo, we're gonna extend the season." Deal with these. Things. 
it just just like I think we're they're getting ready for a long off we're getting ready for a long off season. I spiel. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything blacked out? Yeah. Um. So I guess first I want to touch back on to what um Twisted said about the spam rice thing. Um, with spam mm-hmm. rice being number one, bringing out new tech. I I totally completely agree with this. During the off season, I did it twice. Um, and it was able to literally just put me push me up to the top like it was nothing. It felt like it was the easiest ride ever. I think Indes is having the same thing right now, where he brought out something new that no one's seen before, and all of a sudden he's able to just skyrocket to the top. And I feel like Spam was that person. He brought out a new new deck, new tech, and he was able to solidify himself as first place for a long time. And it really sucks for Spam to then that the comp be seen for so much longer because then it makes it a lot easier for it to fall off. Where when I brought out the double poise or brought the triple triple um, it was double parasite with triple uh triple uh fear. No one had seen it before. It was just something weird and random and something that I had brought out. And it was more of a fun thing, but it was so busted that it was able to let me climb easily. And I, I almost felt like I didn't even really know how to play the deck at the time, but I was just playing random and kind of having fun with it. And it just kind of shows you that like bringing something new and something innovative will always get you somewhere, be able to help you climb uh, a lot higher. And it's also a lot harder for people to really tech around it because they have never seen it before. But then then it comes, like I said, it just comes back to the spam rice thing where I felt like he did, he he innovated, he innovated, and he was at the top of his game, and then all of a sudden he kind of got like, it, it kind of feels like short, and, you know, he got the short end of the stick in, in that um, scenario. Um, not to kind of keep, you know, hitting on that point, but then um, what I'm, what am I excited for the the off season? Personally, I think it's to just bring out some random wacky comps to see if I maybe I can do like a floor comp challenge or something and and limit it even further than people have done before. Maybe to bring out some like scholarship teams that people like, you know. I, I get hit by a lot of scholars saying like double aqua plant, like playing a pure double aqua plant. I can't pass this MMR. I want to see if I personally can do that as well. So I think having mm-hmm. some like fun, wacky mm-hmm. ideas to bring in the off season uh, will be really fun. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I hope I, uh, I hope as well we do have a long off season so then we can go right into V2. Personally, that would be that'd be the most amazing thing ever because I'm definitely excited for V2 and complete change up of uh, the way that the game feels and runs. Um, and it'd be really really cool to see. So I think um, it would, and it also fits perfectly. Um, season twenty being battles we two, I think that would be a great, great thing. Pe- uh, Rallo mentioned it last um, last time as well about uh, season twenty being battles we two, and he might actually not be wrong. So that'd be really cool to see. Uh, v two is definitely something that, um, because it kind of makes this game that we're kind of playing now like these changes that they're doing. It's like why even change it if we're gonna have V two. Like a month, what's the, really? What's the point? Yeah, hard mid season, right? If you think about it in that sense, why are you gonna change the mid season? Really gonna brings up like, an, um, how do y'all feel about like the uh, marketplace and uh, the filters, the added filters you have in the marketplace? You know, like the uh, what's it called, Japanese filters and Christmas filters and you think it makes these things like more uh do you think the, the floor and all like these prices all these japanese axes and christmas axes are going to rise or do you black out since you buy japanese and christmas axes um yeah so we've already seen the floor of japanese and christmas axes start going up um so to reiterate uh crypto gladiator's question his question was do you think uh what do you think about the marketplace change and um then he brought up about Christmas and all, all the other axes and the Japanese axes. Um, first off, we have already seen the floor kind of go up on these axes quite a bit. Um, they're sitting around like 0.135. And that lowest one I was seeing them, it was like 0.07 or something like that. So they have gone up quite a bit already just from this this change. Uh, personally, I think it's a good idea. And then also, I think the market, I just want to talk about the marketplace and as a whole in, in a general. I think we're going to see the marketplace crash again. This happened last season. Uh, we're at a number where the axes are growing rapidly to we're at 10 million axes. So there's going to be a lot of people pushing their axes off onto the marketplace. Um, Albino Tiger is one of one of my friends, moderator, and also a was a breeder. And he also kind of got rid of his scholarships right now because he's prepping and getting ready for V2. So it's like something that like I think a lot of people are going to be thinking like, hey, I need to, I, I want to have the Ethereum or have whatever their, their value is so they can be ready for V2 when it hits. To hit the ground running and to hit it really hard so i think as a 
as a breeder, it's kind of a scary time. Or as a person just trying to come into the game, it's kind of a scary time because you don't really know what's going to happen. And we're also now speculating, is V2 coming or is V2 not coming? So we're in, we're in, we're in like a weird boat where it's like, do I want to buy axes? Do I not want to buy axes? It's off season again. Should I sell my axes? So mine don't get nerfed. This, this is what was really bad last season. And we definitely saw it because I kept getting asked by people, oh, should I buy a team now? Should I wait two weeks? Should I buy a team now? Should I wait two weeks? And it's kind of hard to be, to tell someone be like, Hey, yeah, I think it's okay to continue to buy because you know, this, but it's, it's, it's just a kind of a speculation thing. And it's, it's always makes the market crash. So we're probably gonna see a huge market crash for, for axie prices. And, uh, a lot of people are probably selling their, their that's, axes. That's interesting that I say that. So do you feel like the prices of these, like say these meta axes, right? Like these sure. uh, mech axes that are like cost so much. Do you think these prices are going to dramatically drop down as soon as the season ends? Yes. Are you all agreeance it, on that? Like all three of y'all? Definitely. Rusty, do you feel the same way? Yeah, the way I see it is that think about it from like a, a manager's perspective, right? Uh -huh. V two is coming out, so we don't know what's going to be good, what's not going to be good. So, I mean, just like anyone, like I, I can, I'm pretty sure I can speak for other people, including myself. Why wouldn't you want to sell everything, see what V two has to offer, and then buy everything back? Um, if everyone's thinking like that. The market is going to crash because everyone's going to want to sell. No one's going to want to buy. So that being said, I, I do think we'll see a bit of a dip in the marketplace. Um, for us personally, like our guild, uh, we can't really we can't really sell because we have so many scholars uh, scholarships, and that a lot of our our um, scholars depend on those scholarships. So you know we'll go in with uh, you know the dark times, and uh, we'll <laughs> yeah. we'll see what happens, and then we'll hopefully you know we'll bounce back after. And that, that's okay. We don't really mind. It's uh, you know they always say it's uh, it's always darkest before dawn. So right. uh, hopefully after the dark we we have a lot of lights, and that's what are, that's what I'm hoping for. So are you saying dawn buff then? I heard dawn yeah, buffs. Dawn, dawn buffs also. Dawn buffs. <laughs> dawn buffs confirmed. True. <laughs> and it's always darkest before dawn buffs. <laughs> Dude, I, I, you know I really hope they do something with the dots, right? To me, they're the most like visually best looking class i think at least i think i don't know about oh yeah i just I, love, I, so. I love the way they look and I, I really hope they do something with them so i can just buy more and, and start actually because they're i love so the way they pretty. look they're so pretty yeah how y'all feel about don's uh twisted what are they <laughs> <laughs> they're, Come on, they're, man. Like, they're, they're like True. a bird right like uh not even yeah. half of a bird to be honest <laughs> They're like they're like slow birds with like higher skill, right? That's what they are. Like, <laughs> they, they they freaking suck. Like, so true. Like, maybe pick them up now because they're cheap, and maybe they're gonna go up because like like they haven't even been seen at all, right? I thought dons are gonna get buffed last season. Like everyone, I think everyone did, but they didn't do anything to those dons. So like, yeah, give some love to the dons because they they honestly don't even exist in my mind. That'd also be a good uh, V2 speculation, especially because they're not bred very much. So, like, the smallest pool of Axie is probably getting into Dawn. So, like, if you picked up, like, five to ten Dawns for just some random reason, any zero breeds that you can find that maybe you have, like, are breedable together, who knows? Maybe maybe there there were something. You know what's, what's crazy, <laughs> though? <laughs> what's crazy, though, is if you actually go to the marketplace right now and actually look at the Dawn price, they're actually pretty decently priced for some reason, right? We know they completely yeah. suck. The don the don prices are like kind of staying stable, and they're not dropping. You know, like the floor. If you go look at the floor right now, the floor is what I want to buy like sixty one dollars to buy one axi, which is which is it's, insane, it's right? Thousand, it's absolutely there's, insane. There's really a thousand dons compared compared to every other class. Like uh, just looking right now, fifty thousand dusks, twenty thousand mechs. What is it like? Yeah, hundred probably hundreds and you know, hundred thousand probably like aquas, sixty thousand plus birds, aquas are up there as well. It's just like dons are the only class. Hundred fifty thousand plus aquas. Wow. Yeah, that's one hundred and fifty K aquas. Yeah, that's why we see the price of aquas so cheap and the price of the dons kind of retaining their value. It's because there's like just there's just none of them. Uh yeah, there's, there's, like, there's there's like there's there's yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm like, looking at the I'm looking at the, the, the market right here. It's ninety six dollars and it jumps to hundred and thirty dollars. Where the floor that's literally double what the floor is in regular axes. Which is yeah. insane, and which is funny because the first dawn is a double anemone lamb emo dawn. Who in the hell even made that? Yeah. 
<laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, what someone said in the chat, maybe that they just won't buff Donald. They'll give Cactus an extra 50 damage. Yeah. <laughs> oh my, let's not. That was yeah, that was weird. That was weird, right? Since you think about it, just like let's buff cactus. That's there are so many things about the patch notes. Yeah. Uh, just just looking at them, you could already tell that this patch is gonna be a rough one. They're at <laughs> they're at the the headquarters, the Axie headquarters, and they're like, okay guys, let's do a raffle. Whatever card we pick, we have to buff. Cactus. Oh shit. Uh let's just give it five damage. Like, <laughs> like that's the only thing that makes sense, right? Like, uh, it's just I don't know, it makes zero sense, right? Like, out of, the, out of all the other stuff they they nerfed and buffed, it's like why even? Man. Yeah, <laughs> it just made it more broken than. Sometimes you just think like, like man, this person, not, what's this person thinking when they? <laughs> I think it's like that with like uh, I mean every card game right is is like that right when you every patch or every like change in the game is always like man what's this person thinking you know to us right because y'all are like the pro players right and then y'all know like how op these some of these cards are so when y'all see some of these changes you're just like what were they thinking <laughs> you know but I I like the, what they did and I, I don't know how y'all feel about this we kind of go around I feel about this I know they approached uh, us in Miami uh, some of the uh, the Sky Mavis team. They were talking about like probably getting with the players, and I seen G host right post the uh, I think it was like a spreadsheet, right? Like, hey, how do y'all feel, you know, about these changes? Could give us some of the changes. So, how do y'all feel about that? Like, them kind of going towards more so towards the community.